Here is the time and the place to reconnect with him, to get yourself, you know, realigned with him. So really looking forward to a great service. We've just got one hour today because uh, we, ha we are planning church on the beach. But um, the weather forecast is, anyway, we'll talk about that later. But for now, let's worship God. And if you want to pray for good weather in the process, then please feel free. Would you like to stand? Super, let's worship him together. Hey, shall we pray first? Might be nice. Lord God, we thank you that you are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That as we congregate this morning, that Lord, we're here to worship and to honor you. We're here to lift up your name. We're here to honor Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So we do that right now, intentionally, decisively, and we turn our attention to you. We love you, Lord. Amen. Let's do it. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. Presence of my enemies, sing a little louder. 
service um, where we're uh, giving, where we're, uh, we're praising the Lord and we're uh, asking Him for things as well. Um, but before we start, and um, I would just like to, I would just like to bring uh, a scripture to you that came to me just as we were singing this song about the King of Kings. So it's uh, 2 Kings chapter 19 verse 8. We're kind of jumping into the middle of a story here. Uh, what's happening is uh, the kingdom of Judea under King Hezekiah is uh, being attacked by the king of Assyria, and it's a terrifying, terrifying, frightening thing that's happening to them. 
uh, you can go to the British Museum and see uh, all about the Assyrians and what they were like. Um, you can even see a wall carving of something that's happening in this passage there. Um, anyway, so we'll begin reading from verse 8. Then the Rabshaka, uh, that's the ambassador of Assyria, returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna, for he heard that he had departed from Lachish. And the king heard concerning Terka, Ter, uh, Teraka, king of Ethiopia, the king, that's King Hezekiah. Look, he has come out to make war with you. So he again sent messengers to Hezekiah, saying, Thus you shall speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Do not let your God, in whom you trust, deceive you, saying, Jerusalem shall not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Look, you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands by utterly destroying them, and shall you be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered those whom my fathers have destroyed? Gozan and Haran and Rezan, and the people of Eden who were in Talisar? Where is the king of Hamath, king of Arpad, and the king of the city Seraph and Sepharvim? And Eva. And Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. He received this terrifying, terrifying letter of a massive army coming towards his city, the last outpost that he had. And he spread it before the Lord. And that just, um, I thought that was wonderful that we have a king of kings, that we can come and spread our deepest worries before. And if you'd like to know the Lord's answer, um, I'd be very happy to tell you all about it after the service. I love, <laughs> I love this passage of scripture. Um, but with this in mind, we, we have a few things to spread before the Lord today. Um, so we'll just bow our heads in prayer. Oh Lord our God, we, we thank you um, that you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we thank you that no matter what happens to us, we can always spread it, toward, spread it before you. And we can always be confident in an answer from you. Um, Lord, we have, we have quite a few requests for healing at the moment, and Lord, we'd just like to take this, just to take this time at the moment to thank you and to praise you for the healing that he has done, that you have done in the past. Lord, there's not a single person in this room, really, um, who cannot in some way um, attest to your, um, uh, to your healing love and power. Um, just thank you for everything that you've already done for us in this room. Uh, you are deserving above all of the praise that we're giving you today. And so, Lord, just with that in mind, um, knowing that you love to heal, we'd just like to bring um, Karina's mum before you. Um, she uh, has had issues with her bones, and it's Karina's really worried about her. So we would just like to ask you to, to heal Karina's mum's bones. Um, and Lord, we, we would bring Joseph Miller um, before you, who's, um, who was infected with something while he was on holiday. Um, he's in the hospital at the moment. We would just ask for healing for his foot. Um, we'd just like to bring Morag's dad before you as well, who's getting tested for something at the hospital as well. Um, and Lord, we would like to pray, to pray for Alan Moir, who was also admitted to hospital. Um, but for treatment due to an addiction to alcohol, Lord, we uh, we just ask that you would uh, that you would break the holds that this addiction to alcohol has on Mr. No Mr. Moore. Um, Lord, we thank you for all of these people, and we know that you love them all very, very much. Um, Lord, we know that uh, you are you have said in your word that you love to give good gifts to your children. And Lord, we would ask you for healing for them. Um, that they might go on um, living their lives and go on glorifying you in the way that they live them. Um, and Lord, we would like to we would like to thank you for Davi, um, who is thirty one today. <laughs> Lord, thank you for uh, keeping him alive for the past thirty one years. <laughs> 
thank you for thank you for saving him for redeeming him and we thank you for bringing him here to river of life church um lord we we love having him here and we love everything that you're doing in his life um we love everything that you're doing in our lives through the v and we just pray that you would continue to bless him and joanna uh in the years going forward and lord um lastly we would just like to thank you for uh, allison jean's friend and we've been praying for for a wee while. Um, she was being tested for thyroid cancer and the tests have come back and they are clear. And Lord, we thank you so much for that. Um, we thank you for how encouraged, uh, for, we thank you for strengthening Alison, for comforting her throughout this whole time. Um, and Lord, we thank, Lord, she was so grateful that uh, we were praying for her. Um, so Lord, thank you. Um, Thank you for assuring her that you were there. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. song but every time it talks about the three in one I always think about my bike and the oil <laughs> so we put on the bike chain three in one oil anyway it's just me but uh, it's kind of a good analogy actually because you know the oil of the of the Lord flows and enables us to function effectively and uh, speaking about bikes then uh, did anybody see the bikes flying through uh, lanes and down the White Sands. Anybody go to see the, the World Championships? Yeah, me too. I walked down Bank Street and I saw this, this guy on a bike go like 10 times faster than I do on a bike. It was incredible to see. It was great fun. And, um, and for Kings, then praise the Lord, we had our best week ever in terms of sales. It was just consistent all the way through the week. So it's a record-breaking week. Let's thank the Lord for that. Very, very good. Champion. Okay, so it's time for us to give. Yay! <laughs> Let's try that again. It's time for us to give. Woo! So you know the score. We talk about giving every week, so I'm not going to do it today, short service, but just, uh, you know, remember as we're giving, then we're giving it as unto the Lord. So we can pray and let the baskets go along. Thank you, Lord, for all the goodness that you express to us, for all your kindness, for all your love, for all the miracles, for all the amazing things that you've done and that you continue to do in our lives, and even taking us through times of hardship that you're there every step of the way. Thank you, Lord. So we give from the bottom of our hearts this morning to express that gratitude. 
multitude. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So let's let those go along the rows. Thank you very much. And then a uh, couple of things to, to say. We're um, sort of still in summer. Yes, we are. And schools don't go back until a week on Tuesday. Staff go back on Friday. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, schools don't start properly until then. So uh, you've got an extra week of, of, uh, of, of holiday kids, at least. Um, and then this afternoon, then, we're um, just undecided about church on the beach. So Dumfries' um, forecast seems to be quite good, but then when you switch it to Sandy Hills, at least on AccuWeather, then 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock, then it's saying rain, but only 0.4 of a millimeter and only 60% chance of rain. So it's kind of on the edge, isn't it? So who's up for doing it? That, remember to have a boat. Who's up for not doing it? <laughs> well, it seems that the eyes have it. Uh, do you want to go for it? I mean, ah, oh, that's nice. So worst case, then we get there, and then it rains, and then we turn around and come back home again. The only thing is that you do have to think, pay something like four or five pounds to park the car at Sandy Hills. So uh, probably making the decision before the car's parked <laughs> would be better than after. But I'm sure it's going to be fine. So uh, do you know how to get to Sandy Hills? If you haven't got a car, then find somebody with a car. If you have spaces, then would you like to lift your hand? So, yeah, so we've got, yeah, thanks very much. Christine, would you like to stand? And that, well, everyone that has spaces in the car, would you like to stand? And then somebody can tag on to you or put your hand up boldly. That's it. Super. So I'm sure it will all work out. Um, I think many of you have already arranged lifts anyway. Super. So that's on. Uh, and then what else is happening? Well, prayer won't be happening this evening because, you know, I've gone to the beach. So prayer's not on. Let me get my info up here. Um, don't forget pantry in our old building, 7 to 8 every night for free food. Youth, did you say something about it starting on Wednesday? A week on Wednesday. So it's the day after, after, day after schools go back. So no youth this week. And then we've got our foundations course. Lovely. So that starts on Wednesday, the 23rd of August. Oh, sorry, I forgot to change that. Still says Wednesday 22nd, which doesn't exist. But it's Wednesday 23rd of August at 7.30. It's at James and Candu's. So uh, if you see or phone them afterwards, I'll post this on the church WhatsApp group. Now, we've also got, very kindly, Talia and Lydia have offered to run a creche at the same time in the basement of James and Candu's home. So if, you want, if you've got little kids that you have to look after, then... Um, feel free to bring them along as well so you don't have to arrange a babysitter for that night and uh, they've kindly offered to do that. It's only just going to be for an hour, hour and a half um, so it won't finish too late but um, if you want to take advantage of that then feel free. Again mentioned to James of Um and then Sisterhood is restarting in September. Now we have heard from St Mary's Church, St. Mary's Greyfriars Church, that their final service will be at the end of September. So that's a you know, very sad moment for them. And so we'll, you know, kind of help them to, to sort of realize that we're here to carry on the baton. Uh, after that, then um, it's, it's a uh, find out and see process, roadway to see how we can A, continue to meet here and then B, if we could take over the church building on the hill. So uh, if you could just bear that up in prayer, whatever we do is probably going to cost money. So if you feel like, you know, donating to our church building fund, then the doors are open. <laughs> and uh, feel free. Bank account details were on the screen. I'll happily give them, give them to you again afterwards. 
but just, yeah, pray for this and pray for the people at St. Mary's Grove Friars as well. Uh, I mean, they have been wanting this to happen for quite some time because it's a burden for them running the church, but they've announced their final service will, will be then. When the church actually dissolves as an, as an entity, as an organization, will be decided at a later date. But they just felt they had to, you know, put a date on their final meeting time. And uh, the week before that, then the final gardening club will be here. And so uh, they were having a final coffee morning as well, which would be lovely if we could attend. It's, I think it's the last Saturday in, in September, but I'll give you the final date. But they're raising funds for the Nith Inshore Rescue Service, which is fine, uh, you know, desperately needing funds at the moment. So, yeah, let's stand with our brothers and sisters across the road and, and also appreciate their kindness in being so welcoming to us using this building. So they're a great, great bunch of people. Um, what else have I got to tell you? Helen and I are not going to be here on Sunday because we're heading to Italy. And we're going to, yeah, we're going to a pastor's conference in Naples with pastors from all over uh, Europe. It's a Euroleed conference. And we're spending an extra couple of days in Italy while we're there as well, just to enjoy it. But uh, we'll be back the following Sunday, so two weeks today. And we'll be full of, uh, full of the Holy Spirit, having enjoyed a wonderful uh, two-day conference down in Naples. I think that's everything. Oh, just a point about the kids. So last week, we did have kids running out on the pavement after church, which is extremely dangerous because, as you know, it's a busy road there. Um, so after church in particular, don't forget that you've got kids. <laughs> I know you can get carried away in the Holy Spirit, but uh, don't forget that you own some children and that they depend upon you for their existence. So, you know, you might have had a reprieve while they've been at kids' church and things, but own them again afterwards and make sure that they, you know, are around. Keep an eye out for them. And the last thing we want is for them to go uh, on, on the road there and then, you know, some horrific accident happened that just doesn't bear thinking about, really. And remember, too, that through here is out of bounds, really, after, you know, crash the uh, Little Wonders is finished, then there is a, a door with a push bar which is never locked from the inside because it's an emergency, fire emergency exit. So I think one of the kiddies last week did actually push that open and go out of their own accord. So just watch that they don't go down there. And, um, and all that. I know it's, ha it's, it's difficult with young kids. Um, we have five kids and they're about two years apart, you know, pre precisely planned. <laughs> and so, so there was a time that we had five kids under 10 years old. So uh, we had five kids under, under 20, and then we had five kids. Now we've got five kids almost approaching 40. So, well, one of them's over. But anyway, uh, enough to say that we do know how difficult it is when you've got lots of little kids running around. But, uh, you know, just, just be on the ball. And, um, and, you know, don't just assume that everyone else in church will be looking after your kids after uh, the kids' activities are finished. Um, sometimes it's difficult for us that aren't your parents to know how much can we actually discipline them, how much can we intervene. So it's very difficult to, um, you know, expect people who aren't your, your who, people who aren't parents of your kids to actually step in and be parents. Have you got the gist? In other words, just look after your kids, please, for their safety and for our benefit as a church as well. And I know it's difficult also with, uh, you know, cries and, and with, with them making a noise because they do tend to do that. But if, again, you can try to, try to do something about that. Once one starts crying, I've noticed all the others start crying as well. So, um, you know, if you can kind of help them to realize we're in church and there's lots of other people who are not used to crying kids around the place. So, all right, good, lecture over. <laughs> so now it's time for me to, oh, and all the kids are staying in, by the way, uh, because we're finishing in half an hour. And so it's an all-age church service this morning. 
So let's put our hands together for Pastor Helen, who's going to lead us in that. Hello. Okay. Kids, instead of going into the back room and to Little Wonders, would you like to come sit on the cushions here this morning? Because I've got something to tell you that we're going to let the grown-ups listen in on this morning. But I've got something special for you. So if you come down here and we're going to see what God says to you this morning. Okay. Grown-ups, you can listen as well because this is important for you. <laughs> okay. In the Bible, it's a good book, the Bible, isn't it? I don't think I know your names. Let me know your name. Jimmy. Jason. Bethel. Elisha. Elisha. Oh, gorgeous names. And I see there's one or two others that are not coming down, but they may be coming down later. Well, it's good to have you here. Do you know the Bible says there's two scriptures that I want us to have today. Maybe you've heard them in kids' church. One says, you are God's masterpiece or his workmanship. There it says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That word workmanship can sometimes be translated a masterpiece. Do you know what a masterpiece is? Yes, something that's made very importantly. What would you like to say? It's perfect. These kids are good, aren't they? That's exactly that. And you know, that's what God says about you. Because he made you. And he made all the grown-ups as well. And he says about us that we're his workmanship, his masterpiece. Now, masterpieces... You usually find like works of art or special sculptures or something like that. And they're put in galleries because they're very precious and usually have lots of um, lights and alarms around them so people don't pinch them because they're valuable. And that's exactly what God says about you and you, that you are valuable to him and that he created us for good works. Also says in Psalm 139, I praise you, Lord, because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know that full well. So God doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't make us badly. He makes masterpieces. And what a gallery of masterpieces we have in church this morning. You know, if, it, if you ever doubt that you are seen or valuable or precious, don't. Because these scriptures tell you that you are so valuable. Now, something that I've made very well are these things. I'm just going to go up here for a minute and get something. Can anybody tell me what these things are? Musical instruments. That's right. We've got a bass guitar and drums and keyboard and a guitar. And usually we have a, an accordion as well, but the accordionist isn't here this morning. What do they do? Anybody tell me what they do? You answered. Can you tell me? No? What? They play music. Wow, that's right. Okay. Shall we tell it to play music then? Okay, well, shout at these instruments to play music. Come on, make them play. They need people. Aha. Uh -huh. So they can't play on their own. They need somebody to play them, don't they? Do you think I could play them? Okay, let's see if I can play this guitar. Right. 
they're very polite and they're sort of looking at me. Well, the truth is, I can't play the guitar. I can play it after a fashion, thank you. But I'm not. What about the drums? I do not. I don't think I dare risk that. <laughs> okay, you ready? Yes. I quite like this. <laughs> I could think I could do this. Do you think I could lead worship? Yeah. They're laughing at me down here. <laughs> right, so one of the things that we've learned is that God makes masterpieces. Somebody has made these masterpieces of instruments as well. But if we have them in the wrong hands, they don't sound too good, do they? We might get a laugh out of it. But you know, that's what God wants from us. He made us. He made us as masterpieces. He made us wonderful, fearfully and wonderfully made. Yet if we're in the wrong hands, we don't sound too good. We bring out the wrong music. Bible says that we're like clashing cymbals <laughs> or badly played guitars. And I know that God wants us to understand that if we give our lives into the one who created us and made us and let him play his tune, let him, what, what, what did it say? He created us in Christ Jesus for good works. In other words, he created us to make the music of heaven. He created us to be what he wanted us to be and to live the way he wants us to live so that the best sound ever can come out of it. Now we have two people here who are much better at playing instruments than I am. And so in the hands of a master, this is what a guitar sounds like. amazing. A little bit better than what I played. And what about the keys? When somebody is able to play. The message this morning that I really want you to get is that giving our lives to Jesus is giving us back to the master who created us and made us and letting him play his music through our lives. When he has the control of our lives, we sound like this, not like this. I've got three people I want to come and share with you, and you children in particularly, because 
I think it's very important. When I was 11, I gave my heart to Jesus. And it was the best decision I ever made. I remember it really well because it was my 11th birthday. And God has guided my life all the way through to now when I'm 66. And he's played his music through me. And he plays it really well. So I'm God. Lydia and Jack and Mark, and they're going to tell you very briefly why they gave their hearts to Jesus when they were very young and what it's been in their lives. Hey, kids. I was five years old when I gave my heart to Jesus. Uh, is anyone in here five years old? Do we have any five-year-olds in here? No. Okay. Well, you have to tell me how old you are. How old are you? Seven, how old are you? Eight, what about you? How old are you? Four, that's awesome. How about you? Seven, eight, okay, awesome. So I was a kid too when I gave my life to Jesus. I was in Sunday school and we sang a song that you might not have sung in Sunday school, but I think your parents did. So y'all have to sing with me for this one, okay? We sang, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Who's got the whole world in his hands? God. And I just remember hearing that and thinking, wow, God must be huge. He must be a massive, big God to be able to hold the whole world in his hands. And then I heard a verse that brought it all together for me. It's John 3:16, And if you know it, and this includes y'all, if you know it, you can quote it along with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Who is that? Jesus. That whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And someone said, for God so loved the world. That means for God so loved Jimmy, for God so loved Bethel, for God so loved Jack, for God so loved Helen, and you can put your name in that. God so loved each and every single one of you that he gave Jesus to be the sacrifice for our sins. And that means that we can have relationship with God and we can have salvation. And I remember I knew I wanted Jesus to come and live in my heart. So when I was five years old, I just was amazed at how such a big God would love me and care for me. And a big God loves you and cares for you so much that he gave everything to have friendship and relationship with you and to give you salvation. The Bible also says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. All of us have messed up. Who's messed up before, anyone? Has anyone never messed up? Okay, I don't see a single hand. Okay, all of us have messed up, and the consequence of that is separation from God, but Jesus made a way for us to repair that relationship and to have Jesus in our lives, and you're never too young to make that decision. You're never too old to make that decision, to invite Jesus into your life. Amen? There you go. Oh, well, how do I follow that one up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, uh, I came to know Jesus Christ when I was nine, so you were, you were five. Yeah. Nice. Four years, four years older. But <laughs> yeah, but, well, um, Gosh, where'd I even begin? So year, years ago, um, like I was, I was raised in like a Christian uh, family. Um, I used to go to church. Uh, used my, my parents used to read the Bible to me when I was younger. Um, it was hello. Well, I, I've kind of moved away from them now and started my own family. <laughs> um, so um, with with Lydia. Um, so I suppose, yeah, yeah, I, so we, we, we do those things ourselves now. But anyway, yeah, we, I, I used to do them. I used to uh, sit and read the Bible with my family, and I hated it. <laughs> I hated it. It was just the biggest waste of time. Um, 
I wanted to go outside, I wanted to jump around, I wanted to go exploring, wanted to play on the PlayStation, wanted to, to do all of these things. Yeah, you get me. Um, but no, and I, I hated it when my parents shouted out the door, say, Jack, come, by, come on back in, we've got to read the Bible, got to pray, and then you've got to go to bed. And I, I hated that. And I really didn't like going to church. Um, I didn't like uh, sitting, by, sitting quietly for two hours. Um, I just did not see the point in it at all. Until one day, when I was nine, and I was lying in bed, and I was trying to go to sleep, and then it occurred to me, oh, or, oh my, I stole something from Woolworths. <laughs> when I was four years old. Now, you're, you're too young to remember what Woolworths was, but basically, <laughs> I can't believe I'm now the one saying, th saying that, but um, Woolworths is a bit like, you know B&M and Home Bargains? Yeah, it was just a junk shop, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, when I was four years old, I stole something from Woolworths. It was a little Spider-Man badge, tiny wee thing. And I was... It just, I just remembered it when I was nine years old, lying in bed one night trying to go to sleep, and I felt awful. Look, looking back, it was just such a small thing, um, but it just occurred to me, like, I am stealing things. I'm four years old, and I'm already stealing things. This is already, this is already not looking good. <laughs> <laughs> But the awful thing was that even after four years old, I went on to steal things. Yeah. I used to steal quite a lot of stuff. But that was the thing that got me going. So I was lying there in bed trying to go to sleep, feeling incredibly guilty. Like, oh my goodness. Somebody lost out on 50 pence. I, are those police sirens after me? These were things that I used to, that I used to think about. Um, and then... Uh, uh, just after talking to, after talking, to, listening to my parents, they used to talk about uh, how we need the Lord to forgive us of our sins, and I'd never understood that right up until that point. Up until that point, I was like, I don't need the Lord. I can do what I like. Um, but that night, I came to the realization that I couldn't live four years of my life without becoming a thief, so I needed Jesus. And so it took months. Um, yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't just give my life to him at that specific point in time. Maybe I should have, <laughs> um, but I really didn't want to. And then uh, one day, uh, I just couldn't do it anymore. Couldn't live with the guilt. Couldn't live um, because it was awful. It was keeping me up at night. And I just asked the Lord for forgiveness, and I asked him to become my Lord because Strange, I'd always believed that he was God, but I never actually believed him to be my God. I believed him to be the Lord, but he was never my Lord. And uh, one night, uh, I asked him to be my Lord. I fell asleep easily. It had been a while since I'd been able to fall asleep so easily. And I had a dream, and I was at a theme park. I remember walking up to the entrance to this theme park feeling really excited. I'm going, going somewhere wonderful. And there was this man at the gate. And uh, he, was, he was beckoning people in, like, come on in, come on in, you're all welcome. And I went to this theme park and I had a great time until I got to the roller coaster. So when I got on the roller coaster and we were doing all these rides, my stomach was doing this awful thing that I had been doing for months as I was wrestling with this guilt. And... I felt I am in danger. I could fall off this thing, and I could, uh, I could, I could die. Um, but I didn't, and I survived. Got off, and just as I was leaving the theme park, the man who had been uh, greeting everybody at the gate and welcoming people in, he took me aside and he whispered in my ear and he said, "You're forgiven." And I woke up, and that is how I became a Christian. And it's, uh, it's had its ups and downs, and it's been, it's, gosh, it's been nearly 20 years. Um, I'm still here. 
uh, still going, and the Lord has really kept me going through all of it. Yes, hello. Um, possibly. I, I walked away thinking that I'd seen Jesus, that it was just Jesus. Well, I've been, pray I've been uh, praying to him, uh, asking, uh, asking him for years not to, for forgiveness, and um, that the police cars around weren't coming looking for me. <laughs> I know, I know, it's amazing what a little guilt will do to you, but no, I believe that it was Jesus, and he's, uh, he's never failed to answer my prayers ever since. I, anyway, that's my testimony. And, oh yes, you can go. So, uh, mine's not quite uh, as complicated as that. I don't think I ever stole anything, but when I was, when I was eight or something, what I do remember is that, because uh, I was taken along to church as well, so my dad was a preacher, and my mom uh, took Sunday school, she was my Sunday school teacher, which in some ways was good, but in some ways was bad, because I didn't get away with anything, and I just remember thinking, when I was a kid, I remember thinking that... I didn't want to not be able to do what I wanted to do. So I thought, if I become a Christian, then I, uh, there's lots of things I won't be able to do that maybe I'll want to do. And so, so I really didn't want to be a Christian because I thought it would stop me from enjoying life, you know? And then, but then what happened was somebody came when I was almost nine years old. So I was eight and three quarters. No, I was just a few, a couple of weeks off being nine. And then this preacher came along and he said that Jesus didn't just die for the whole world, he died for you. And I felt like he was pointing at me. He probably was pointing everywhere. But for me, it was like God was pointing at me and saying, you know, I love you. And like Jesus was saying, I died for you. And so he said, uh, you've got to respond to that. If he loves you that much, then you need to respond. And I thought, that's absolutely right. And so I responded. I went to the front, <clears throat> I gave my heart to the Lord Jesus. And uh, then I've, like you, never looked back. And he's always led me day by day. And I've found that rather than, you know, being restricted in what I could do and not being able to join myself, that actually God lets me enjoy myself better than anybody else. And he really does release me. So that's my quick testimony. So, these three people and me, and I'm going to t speak about what Mark and I did, because when Mark went to university, we met each other. And then we fell in love and we got married. And we came over to Dumfries. And God had us start this church. And look at all the people. And there's a lot of them away this now. Look at your kids' church. There's a lot of them not here today, isn't it? Because it's holiday time. But I wonder if we hadn't allowed the master who made us to play his music in our life, whether anybody else would ever be here. Maybe not. You wouldn't have this church to come to because God has played his music on his instruments because he knew what he was doing. And I want to invite everybody here this morning, all the children and all the adults, to think very seriously about, well, Jack said it, you might know that God is God, but is he your God? You might know that Jesus is Lord, but is he your Lord? Is he the master of your life? And will you let him play his masterful pieces of music through the instrument of your life. That's simply the message of today, is you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're God's handiwork, his masterpiece that he prepared so that you could do good works. The good work is following him, living life for him, living life in all its fullness because he is in control of your life. So shall we pray together? Yes, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that you, God, and the Holy Spirit 
made us, and you made us really well. You made us your masterpiece. You're so proud of us. You didn't make a mistake with us. You got it so right. And Lord, we want to give ourselves back to you to be the instrument in your hands that you can play your music. You can have your way in our life. We're not going to say, I don't like being played like this. We're just going to say, Lord, have your way. Play your music through our lives and may it bring you glory and may we be found faithful at the day of your coming. In Jesus' name. Amen. So don't go away without knowing Jesus being your Lord and your Master. Amen? Amen.
Awesome. Let's pray. God, we thank you for how you've blessed us this morning. Thank you for this clear and, and uh, such a you know, powerful message that's, uh, that's, that's just so essential to us living effectively with you. So, Lord, we go from here just reestablishing that you're our Lord and our Savior. You're the one that we follow, the one that we love one that means the world to us. Thank you, Lord, that you hold the whole world, including us, in your hands. And we just honor and bless you for that amazing reality. Thank you that you play us as your masterpiece. Only you know how to truly do that. And we make a pathetic attempt. But Lord, in your hands, you do amazing things in us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus. Amen. Amen. What a great service. I loved it. And I especially like Helen playing the drums. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to uh, hang around for coffee for a few minutes. And then those that want to, then down to Sandy Hills. And uh, we'll do a few games and hang out there. And maybe even worship God a little bit as well. Uh, if weather permits. Lovely. Thank you. God bless. Have a super week.